Well, joining us now, Julia Ribeiro, the ex-Mumbai Police Commissioner. Thank you very much for being with us. A bit of a surprise when Sharad Pawar mentioned your name, Mr. Ribeiro. Will you accept uh, this offer to investigate this case? Has anyone approached you? No, nobody has approached me. And if they do, I will certainly not accept any such offer. I'm not in a, a, at an age where I can do such work. And even if I was able to do it, I would not. I would not like to touch this kind of, of murky, um, you know, situation where uh, um, money and uh, uh, it, it, these encounter specialists and and I don't know what the lobbying that these officers do for for their to get positions of authority and power. I would not get involved in it at all. Yes. Mr. Ribeiro, I just uh, so if Mr. Sharad Pawar or for that matter, if Mr. Udav Thakre were to approach you and say, given, I mean, the fact that you are respected universally across this country, this is a serious issue. Um, and please, can you look after this investigation? Can you oversee it? You're absolutely sure no way of your doing it. No, I would not touch it with a barge pole. This is a, a very tricky situation. And uh, I don't know where this is all going to lead to. And, uh, um, uh, you know, it is better for them to, to settle it themselves. The politicians, they should settle it themselves. Because, you know, the type of murky politics also that is going on, I, I am disgusted. That is all I can say. Mr. Ribeiro, you've written, and I read that editorial of yours, that the BJP has access to grind uh, with uh, Udav Thakre, Shiv Sena, and these are your words, in fact, and that a case like this one ensures sweet revenge. Do you believe this entire case is being politically orchestrated? No, the, the, besides the political orchestration, I think in this case, at least has, has benefited the public because all this, uh, whatever is happening in this, uh, with regard to the appointment of police officers, the way that uh, the politicians interfere, particularly in postings and transfers of the people at the cutting edge, this is something that should stop. And I'm happy that the people, it will come to the notice of the people when the discussions take place in the press that uh, how the politicians uh, misuse their powers of appointment and transfers. I know Mr. Sharad Pawar himself has made a uh, uh, statement some time ago, about I think 10 or 15 or 20 years ago, saying that the transfer industry is the one industry that is thriving. And this is what is the most disgusting factor. It uh, has allowed corruption to hit the roof and it is going further. And then they allow these, uh, these senior officers. Uh, what I'm really ashamed of saying is that even IPS officers today are, are lobbying for these posts. They are lobbying and when they lobby, they sell their souls and, by sell, and then they do whatever the people who have uh, uh, helped in appointing them want them to do. And which means uh, total injustice to the people and total corruption that goes on. I think that the public should know what is happening. And, and uh, they, you know, when we talk about police reforms, it is this, just this, the misuse of the power of transfer. Now, how was Mr. so-and-so appointed? That is what, what we should find out. I'll ask you about that, sir. Uh, how was uh, Sachin Vaze uh, appointed? Uh, he was a Shiv Sainik at one stage. I'll come to that. However, the allegation in this case is that Parambir Singh, the police commissioner, was trying to frame or is trying to frame Anil Deshmukh, the home minister. Why else would he not have moved to make arrests after he learned about this alleged corruption? Why did he delay this till after he was transferred? Is that not something which is key here? Very serious. Now, I put myself in his place. It never happened in our times. Of course, I understand that. But uh, when it does happen, I mean, what do you do? Do you accept it? Suppose you have, you have come to know that your, your juniors have been called by the minister and told that they have to collect money. I mean, the first thing I would do as a police commissioner, I would obje object 
to that. I would go and meet the home minister and say, why are you doing this? I mean, this is not on. And if you if you are going to do this, I don't, I'm not going to, to, to accept it. And you, if you don't, and if you also don't want to accept that, then I, I quit. That is what uh, a very uh, honest and straightforward officer should do, but he did nothing of the sort. So it is, uh, I think that this is very murky. Uh, Mr. Ribeiro, would you have moved for legal action on the basis of, uh, of evidence like this against a political leader, a chief minister or a home minister, if you believed that this evidence was credible? I, you know, when you go to that extent to a, to a senior officer, senior minister, I suppose they will have to make uh, 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 some sort of inquiry and the, the inquiry should be made. For example, the, uh, he, uh, the allegations are made against the home, the state home minister. So his party chief should make those inquiries and his party chief is extremely um, shrewd and capable of doing it. So I think that instead of recommending a, a poor 92-year-old uh, retired officer, he should do it himself. A singularly articulate and brilliant 92-year-old uh, retired officer, one might add. Uh, but do you, Mr. Ribeiro, believe that uh, you are being somehow or the other dragged into a murky political battle? Is that why you don't want to get into it? Not your age, sir. Your mind is exceptionally sharp. No, I think the only intention perhaps was to, um, you know, uh, uh, get something else on the on the table so that people's attention would be drawn up, drawn to something else. I, I don't know really why my name was was suggested and what can a, a very old man uh, who who is disgusted with what is happening, who is disgusted that his old colleagues in the, I mean, you know, we we were we were proud of our service. And now you have this type of thing going on where, uh, uh, you know, that even IPS officers are, are, are uh, suspected of extortion. I mean, this is ridiculous. And I think that um, we should all um, hang our heads in shame. Mr. Ribeiro, there is an alleged message exchange with, uh, with an ACP, ACP Patil, which is revealed in this leaked letter. Now, the allegation being that Parambir Singh, the commissioner, had this WhatsApp conversation with Patil, where Patil responded uh, with information, right? And that this information will now be used to build up Parambir's case after his transfer. Um, that, you know, this is all happening after his transfer. Is that, is that a log is there, is there logic in that argument? I don't know what you're talking about because I have not heard about this letter that has been leaked. Okay. Uh, I, I would, I would only say this is another, you know, another piece of red herring that is being taken along. I, I don't know what it is about. And I didn't hear it till you told, asked me my, just now. Mr. Ribeiro, uh, Sharad Pawar today said that there is non-existence of any uh, proof, or there is no proof of any actual money transfer, that there are allegations, but there is no proof of money having actually been transferred. So therefore, um, are the allegations somewhat weaker without evidence having been presented so far? No, I don't know about that, whether there any money has been transferred and I, nobody has told me that any money has been transferred and that it is only a, in future. I thought it was just a, a, a suggestion. That is what he seems to have said, that the minister wanted 100 crores a month and the figure appears to be quite big. I mean, I, I can't dream of 100 crores in any case. But then uh, I think it is uh, uh, something that a bit has to be looked into. And, uh, and if uh, any such demand was made, well, the first thing that the ch uh, uh, commissioner should do is to uh, speak to the minister himself because, uh, and say that, look, you all have appointed me. And you want me to live with this? Well, this is stupid. I mean, I, I am not going to occupy this chair and I would like to get out of it. And he didn't seem to have done that. Instead of that, he waited till he was shifted out. Mr. That, Vera, do you do you believe, sir, that the allegations which have been made are strong enough to result in the collapse of the Maharashtra government? 
know that I do not know because uh, uh, you know power is such a is, is such a thing that they might continue to to uh, uh, feel the numbers that are required. So uh, so uh, that that is politics and. Uh, in politics, I have no, I have no stomach for it at all. No stomach for politics at all. One or two more questions, sir. Uh, and you've written about this. What about encounter specialists such as Sachin Vaze? Um, do you believe that encounter specialists are essentially criminals roaming around in uniform? They were very good officers. They were very capable. They had a lot of initiative. We always require such people, but then if you give them a, 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 a carte blanche to do whatever they want, and you give them importance out of uh, proportion to their to their own rank, I mean that is that is going to be suicidal, and that is what apparently has happened because I'm told Sachin Vade was a law unto himself, and uh, he had direct access to the. To the to the uh, police commissioner, which never happened. I perhaps heard about it some time ago. Once uh, when there were two two officers in Bombay City who had that kind of access to a uh, to a certain police commissioner. Right. I never heard of it uh, after that. No commissioner keeps on uh, uh, cohorting with uh, with an assistant police inspector or a police inspector or an assistant commissioner of police. Right. He normally stops at the deputy commissioner level, and I'm surprised that this uh, officer was given in. In fact, I'm surprised that he was reinstated because it was against all norms of discipline and all norms of, uh, of rules and regulations about how these uh, reinstatements should be done. And they were both complicit. There's no doubt about it. Both the commissioner and the political uh, uh, rulers, they are both complicit in, in bringing this gentleman back. And uh, I'm told that once before, uh, uh, some uh, other inspector was also reinstated like that. Now, this is how you, you, uh, you weaken the discipline of the force and you use uh, influence for the simple purpose of, a, of of becoming rich. And this is not what the police force is supposed to do. The police force is supposed to protect the public from such people. And Last question, sir. You, you are, you are, you are uh, actually releasing uh, killers on the, on the public. This is not fair. A last question. Do you believe uh, that Sachin Vaze uh, was as the was the person who planted the gelatin sticks outside Mukesh Ambani's house, and if so, what was the motive? I don't know what the motive was, but all the evidence that seems to be uh, that comes in the newspapers appears to be uh, very, very uh, uh, damaging to Sachin Vaze. And uh, Sachin Vaze probably could not have done it on his own. Then he'll have to find out who, uh, I mean, who, which. He, since he reported directly to the police commissioner, well, I think that the police commissioner must take his his um, his blame also. Because sure. how could he do that without uh, some blessings from somebody? I mean, he's just an assistant police inspector, which is a very, very junior rank. Don't you understand that? I mean, there are, there are at least eight ranks above him, between him and the commissioner. And what is uh, this kind of thing? I've never heard. And that is why the, the police force is becoming uh, so, uh, you know, so, so much in the uh, adverse notice of the public. We are supposed to serve the public. We are a service. Uh, don't they remember that? They don't even seem to bother that they are a part of a service. And, and they just uh, do what um, they are only serving themselves. I mean, what is this that we are encouraging? And it is the politicians who encourage it. They, have, they should stop encouraging these things. And the people should know that. And the people should come out and say that they have had enough. And we don't want this to happen. The police force is for their protection, for the protection right. of the general public, sure. not for the politicians to play around with. All right, sir. Thank you so much uh, for speaking to us and making it absolutely clear you will have no part of any investigation in any of this. Thank you so much, Mr. Ribeiro.
for being with us. Thank you so much indeed, sir. Yeah, thank you.